Hey folks, a great way to get started making an iOS instrument app is to use a sampler. And there are a lot of options out there for samplers. Well, in this video, I'm gonna go over those options and I'm gonna also introduce a brand new sampler that I just released today using AV Audio Unit Sampler. Let's get started. So the name sampler is a bit of a misnomer. It's actually just instruments made from audio samples. Another name for these are romplers. And romplers rule. So for a sampler, you kind of have two options. You can either build it natively with AV Audio Unit Sampler, or you can use a third-party library like AudioKit or Juice. Recently, I gave a remote talk at the Audio Programmers Virtual Meetup, and there I built three samplers live. The first sampler uses AudioKit's Apple Sampler, which is built on top of AV Audio Unit Sampler. The second one was the Dunn Sampler, which is built from the ground up and uses SFCs. And the third sampler was AV Audio Unit Sampler, except for it uses AudioKit for the keyboard and controls. Well, that third example is what we're gonna expand on today. I'll leave a link to that presentation down in the description and the pinned comment, but also I never released the code to that. Well, I have put that in my 100 lines of code audio kit package. So now you can see all those samplers and we'll go over the AV audio unit sampler example here in a little bit. The other third party library a lot of people use is Juice. I just don't have a lot of experience using Juice. I know the audio programmer actually has a ton of tutorials for it. And he also has a great discord group where a lot of people are talking about Juice and audio kit and any other audio framework that's out there. So what are some of the pros and cons of going with the native option? Well, one, anytime Apple comes out with something new, you're gonna get it automatically. You don't have to wait for a third-party library to update and introduce those things. Also, the code you write for it is your own. You don't have to worry about following the licensing of any of these third-party libraries. But the downside is you don't get the community aspect that you get working with one of those frameworks. And a lot of Apple's code is closed source. So you know the thing might be working, but you don't know how it's working. And if you need to change anything under the hood, you're kind of limited in that. All right, so let's jump into Xcode and take a look at the project. So this is my 100 lines of code example, and this is the bare minimum you need to make an instrument with AV Audio Engine using AV Audio Unit Sampler. So first we have to import AV Foundation, and then we create our engine, which is an AV Audio Engine. And in this example, we're just having one node, and that is our AV Audio Unit Sampler. So in our init method, we attach the instrument to our engine, and then we connect our instrument to the engine's main mixer node. Then all that's left is to load our instrument and start the engine. Now for the keyboard, I'm using AudioKit's keyboard package, and then here's where I'm adding it to my view. And whenever someone touches or releases a key, we are calling our instrument start note and stop note. So this is the bare minimum you need to have AV Audio Unit playing an AV Audio Unit sampler. The thing is, is you know, you can have this as a starting point, but then you need to add more things to have it work in a real world context. Like what do you do whenever you get a phone call? What do you do whenever the user plugs in or unplugs their headphones? And that's where this next project comes in. All right, so this is the AV Audio Unit Sampler Toolbox. This is a new open source project I just created and now it's up on GitHub. One of the best ways to figure out how things work here is to just download the code and kind of look through it. That's how I learned a lot of stuff about AudioKit initially, was by downloading the AudioKit cookbook and then just looking at how everything was implemented but I'll go over some of the main points just so you understand how everything's working. So you'll notice there's more files over here in our project, and that's because I don't have everything just in these big bloated classes. Instead, I've moved the audio engine into its own class. Then we have what I'm calling our view conductor that speaks to our Swift UI view. We have an extension off of that class for our MIDI stuff, and for that I'm using MIDI Kit. MIDI Kit is a new open source core MIDI package. It's by Stefan Andrews. I've only been using it for a couple of days, but it's really cool. Then we have our Swift UI elements. If you're gonna embed a view into your main Swift view, sometimes it's better to have those views imported from another view. It just has to do with the way that Swift redraws things whenever you update a state. You'll see that when you look at the code, but that's why everything isn't just in one giant Swift file. And finally, we have our content view, and that's where we're drawing everything that you see on the screen for the app. All right, so let's start with the audio engine. Once again, we're setting up our AV audio engine. Then we have our AV audio unit sampler. And underneath this, we have our effects. We're using AV audio unit effects. So there's one for reverb, there's one for delay, and then you can get more granular with your options whenever you use AV audio unit effects and you use one of these descriptions. Like this one, I'm using it for a peak limiter. Let's just see what some of the other options are here. All right, so they have a delay, a reverb, distortion, peak limiter, AU sound isolation. The GarageBand guy just did a video on this AU sound isolation. It's used to do things like remove the vocals from a background track. There's merger, sampler, I don't know what that is, splitter, NBEQ, remote IO, very speed, MIDI Smith, MIDI Smith, 
MIDI synth, time, pitch, yada, 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 but not those ones. Okay, so then we move down to our init method. This is where our engine attaches all those nodes. Then we connect those nodes, the instrument to the reverb, the reverb to the delay, delay to the limiter, then the limiter finally to our engine's mixer node. Then once again, we are loading our instrument and the instrument is being loaded from our sounds file. Now this is one of the gotchas with using AV audio unit sampler. I'm gonna link to Apple's documentation on this, but basically you wanna put your instrument instruments and sounds inside of a sound folder. And if whenever you're creating your instruments, you can create them by using the sounds that are already in this sounds folder, it's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of headache. Another option is that you can click on your AU preset file and you can change the path to your sound right here. The issue is that whenever you create your application, this path no longer exists. So instead what they do is they put your document directory right here and then they look for a folder called sounds. So they're able to rebuild that path from your document directory. I made another couple of videos showing how to make instruments using GarageBand and Logic for use in AV audio unit sampler. I'll leave a link to those, but you do have this one starter instrument that comes along with the project. Then finally, we set our default values for our effects, and then we start our engine. Now the engine we're actually starting from our view conductor class and the reason I'm not starting it inside of my main engine conductor class is because I might be using that same engine as an AUV3 later on so you want to separate the parts that aren't necessary. That way your app can work one way in standalone and another way in the AUV3 mode. So in this init method we are just starting the engine and then we are connecting to the MIDI. And with MIDI Kit, it is very easy to get this thing up and going. First, we have our MIDI connections here, and then we have a received method where we can start our notes, stop our notes, or do our MIDI CC controls. We also want to update our UI whenever we're doing MIDI events, and so for that, I'm using Notification Center, and I'm sending a notification for MIDI key or knob update. And if I click on our content view, then you can see how those are being used. So down here on the bottom, I have this on receive notification center, and that's where I'm looking at which knob is being turned and I update it from there. Okay, and this is the final part. This is our main Swift view. All we have here is a view conductor, which is pointing at our AV audio unit sampler class. We have five knobs that we're binding to, a scene phase for whenever the application comes to the forefront or goes in the background, and a showing popover boolean, which is used to show a Bluetooth connection screen should you decide to include that. All right, and down here in our view, this should look familiar if you've seen any of my 100 lines of code examples, but here we have a radial gradient, and then we have our effects knob in this Swift UI rack, and we have our Swift UI keyboard. And to see what these are in more detail, you can just double click on them, right click, jump to definition, and this is where you can update the individual knobs to whatever you need. Again, this is intended to just be a starting point. You can look at this stuff and learn from it, but also use it to create your own application. It's basically like I'm giving you the keys to the helicopter, but you still gotta learn how to fly. I'll have a link to this project down in the description. Good luck with it. I'm not gonna be taking pull requests for it, but if you do have any suggestions, I'm totally open to that stuff. And this could absolutely be a great starting point for you creating your own instrument app using AV Audio Unit Sampler. And that's it. Thanks for watching the video, folks. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let me know down in the comments if you have any suggestions or questions. I'm gonna be working on this thing for the next couple of weeks until it's really solid, and then I'll probably update it more in the future whenever new versions of iOS roll out. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Man, Romplers. Boom.